Let's start in West Africa, where foreign investors have signaled enormous appetite for African sovereign debt, despite a recent sell-off in emerging market assets. If the recently floated Nigerian eurobond is anything to go by, and that billion-dollar eurobond was four times oversubscribed, according to the Nigerian finance minister Ngozi okonjo iweala and she said that the results essentially showed quite a bit of confidence in the Nigerian economy. Africa's top oil producer and most populous nation issued a $500 million five-year bond with a 5.375% yield and a $500 million 10-year bond with a yield of 6.625%. Now, the five-year paper received bids of $1.77 billion and the 10-year note $2.26 billion, according to a source who spoke to Reuters. Now, by comparison, Nigeria's debut $500 million 10-year eurobond, which was issued in 2011, got bids worth two and a half times the amount on offer. Speaking of oil, Africa-focused Tala Oil has reported a fairly strong set of test flow rate results and it's doubled its estimate to the depth of Kenya's oil resources in the Turkana Basin. In effect, hailing its exploration program there has been quite successful. In the first half of 2013 trading statement, the company also announced confirmation of a new oil discovery at its Etuko Prospect in the southern part of the Lokichar Basin and said its Sabisa One well in Ethiopia had established that the hydrocarbon system there is also oil prone. The report for Talos and Gabriel Manuel said tests had found a constrained flow rate of 3,200 barrels a day, much more than the minimum analysts had been hoping for, and it doubled its estimate of net oil pay depth to 200 meters for the same well and 75 meters for another, Twigger South 1. Talo sees a flow rate potential of 5,000 barrels of crude a day based on Gamia 1 and Twigger South 1. And it estimates there are about 250 million barrels of oil in place, but that figure could go up after the results of further appraisals. Let's move on to matters of taxes. Africa's economies collectively lose up to $35 billion every single year in tax evasion by transnational companies operating across the continent. Now, those comments came from the African Union Commission's chairperson, Dr. Nkosazana Dlemini-Zuma and Nepad's Ibrahim Asane Mayaki. And they came on the back of the recently concluded G8 summit, which proposed measures to clamp down on money laundering, illegal tax evasion and corporate tax avoidance. Here's CCTV's Trevor Mbija with the details. The financial system, the banks. Briefing reporters at the conclusion of a high level heads of state meeting on ending hunger in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, the chairperson of the African Union, Dr. Lamini Zuma, did not mince her words about the scale and seriousness of the practice that is drawing wider international attention. Multinational companies have come under increasing scrutiny over the allegations of tax avoidance and transfer pricing in African countries. It's not only that they don't pay tax, they also don't declare what they are, t what they are extracting. They, they, de they undervalue what they are extracting. And that is corruption. The comments did not come as a surprise. The recent G8 summit held in Northern Ireland sets out a list of practical actions to be taken to crack down on tax evasion and avoidance. Zuma says Africa needs to improve its capacity to be able to determine the accurate revenues of transnational companies that operate in the continent. Her sentiments were echoed by Dr. Ibrahim Asane Mayaki, the CEO of the New Partnership for African Development, NEPAD, who would like to see G8 summit countries help build capacity and repatriate the funds. The amount of illicit financial flows going out of Africa is roughly $35 billion. So generally people think, well, it's all about corruption. 85% of that money is multinationals who do not pay their taxes. Meanwhile, many African governments are calling for more transnational company investments in order to accelerate growth and create jobs for the growing ranks of unemployed youth. Chinese companies have been quick to respond and are now investing in almost all countries in Africa. Recalling the China and Zambian relations that date back to 1916 when China built the railway that connects Zambia and Tanzania, Zambian Agriculture and Livestock Minister Robert Sihenia says that his country's investment relations with China is satisfactory. The relationship now is of a different kind. It's no longer that just of bilateral arrangements. In any case, the Chinese economy has also changed significantly since um, the, the 60s uh, and 70s. It is now a more robust economy. 
it's a much more, um, uh, shall we say, commercially driven economy. Uh, so rather than bilateral aid... Currently, China is investing in soya bean cultivation in Zambia, and the minister has called for more investment, particularly in the mining sector. Trevor Ombija, CCTV. Right, quick run through the markets for you. Quite a bit of red ink, except, however, from Nigeria, which, of course, has just come off the back of a fairly successful sovereign debt issue. The all-share index over there higher by just over, by just under six-tenths. The all-share index in South Africa on the day down by 1.27%. The 20-share index in Nairobi also in the red by just under 4 percent, uh, 0 0.4 percentage points. And the Egyptian market, after those stunning streaks yesterday, down by 1.72%. We'll keep tabs on these numbers for you. Should be some interesting developments at 1700 GMT.